Okay, so as electric guitar players, we all know that pickups are the most important and influential part of your electric guitar's overall tone. And they can have such a big impact, in fact, that they can sort of decide whether or not you like or dislike your guitar. Now, I've owned plenty of electric guitars over the years, and some I've connected with more than others, and a large part of that comes down to whether or not I liked the pickups that were in the guitar. Even if I really loved the way a certain guitar played or felt, if I didn't like the pickups and the overall tone I was getting out of the guitar, I found that I just never really played it much. But the good news is pickups are one of the easiest things to change on your guitar and it has the biggest difference and can completely change the character and tone of your instrument. So in today's video, we're talking pickup swapping, how to find the right pickups for you, what to look for in a really good set of pickups, and I'm even going to swap the pickups in one of my guitars. That's coming up next. So this is my Gretsch Black Falcon. This is an amazing guitar. I've owned it for about four or five years. I've always wanted a Gretsch. I love the look, I love the sound, but the reality is I almost never play this guitar. The reason being, the stock Gretsch Filtertrons. I really don't think these pickups do this guitar justice. To my ear, they're a little flat, they lack some character, they're sort of one dimensional, and they kind of just sound like really bright, really harsh humbuckers. I don't reach for this guitar very often. In fact, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you might not even know I own this guitar because it doesn't show up in videos very often, and that's a shame. I wanna change that. I want to make this guitar one of my favorites. So in order to do that, we're gonna swap out these stock Gretsch Filtertrons for a set of Lawlers. Now the aftermarket pickup world can be a little overwhelming and intimidating, especially for a first timer. So there's a few things that you should consider before you drop all your hard earned cash on a new set of pickups for your guitar. First of all, the tone you're going for, the type of rig you're playing, and your budget. How much money do you actually have to spend? Now, obviously the tone you're going for is the most important part, right? This is why you're swapping your pickups in the first place. There are pickups that will fit every single style of player and music out there, but you wanna have a good idea of what you're going for before you even start to do the research. The next thing to consider would be your budget. How much money do you actually have to put into your pickups? Now, there are budget pickup manufacturers out there that make some really, really great sounding aftermarket pickups. You don't have to go drop more money than you spent on your Mexican Fender or your Epiphone to get a good sound. Now, if you are on a budget, another great way to keep the cost down is maybe look for a set of used pickups. People are constantly experimenting and trying new things, and sometimes that means they don't like the set that they bought. So you could get a really screaming deal on a set of high-end aftermarket boutique pickups that somebody else already put in their guitar. Now the next main thing to consider in your pickup quest is what output do you want your pickups to be? Now if you're new to this, output refers to the amount of signal that is generated when you play a note or a chord on your guitar. Generally higher output or hotter pickups as we refer to them, send more signal out of your guitar into the front of your amplifier which makes it distort sooner. Conversely, lower output pickups don't send as much signal to the front end of your amp, which means it doesn't push the amplifier quite as hard. Now this is one of those things that is completely subjective and it's based on your personal style and taste as a musician, as well as what type of rig you're using, what pedals you like to play into what type of amp. Now for me, I know after years of experimenting and trying different things that I prefer lower output pickups to higher output ones. That's because of the style of music Music I play and the style of amplifiers I like to use. I don't want my guitar's pickups to constantly be slamming the front end of my amplifier, so I prefer a little bit lower output pickup for that. Also, lower output pickups tend to be a little more bright, meaning they have more clarity, some more top end, which I also like. Now, that's not always the case. Modern pickup manufacturers today have figured out how to make high output humbuckers and single coils maintain that top end brightness, which is amazing. Now, when you're researching pickups and you look at the specs, you'll pretty much always see an output rating for each 
pickup. And this is a number, usually 5.2K or 6.3. And that's a measure of the pickup's output. You can actually measure it yourself if you have a multimeter at home. But basically what you need to know is the higher that number, the higher output that pickup is going to have. Now, if you're new to this and you don't know whether or not you like high output pickups or low output pickups, go to your local guitar store and talk to somebody there and tell them, hey, let me play two different guitars with the same type of pickups where one has higher or hotter output pickups where the other has lower output pickups and spend some time with it, experiment. So you've done your research, you've found what you want and you've ordered your new set of pickups, it's time to throw them in your guitar. So today we're gonna do just that. Now, if you're not confident with a soldering iron or you're nervous about swapping your pickups yourself, just take them down to a local tech and have them do the job. It doesn't take very long and it's pretty easy. They'll charge you a nominal fee, but this is actually something that I would encourage you to try and do yourself. Pick up a soldering iron online if you don't already have one. Watch a few tutorials to learn how to solder. It's not hard. And there's all kinds of resources available depending on what type of guitar you have and what type of pickups you're swapping out. There's plenty of wiring diagrams and easy to follow instructions and video tutorials online taking you through the step-by-step -step process of how to put new pickups in your guitar. Now, with all that being said, I'm actually kind of nervous about this job. I've never swapped pickups on a hollow body guitar before and if you don't know it's actually quite a bit more involved than swapping pickups on a Strat or a Tele or a Les Paul. But after talking to some very competent tech friends of mine they all said I could handle it no problem so we're gonna try it. So before we pull out the soldering iron and tools let's hear what these stock Gretsch Filtertrons sound like then we'll swap the Lawlers in and do a head-to-head -head comparison. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a little workstation put together here. Uh, I've got my soldering iron, some assorted tools, some things I think I will need, and most importantly, I have the guitar and the new pickups. Now, the pickups I ended up going with are a set of Lollertrons. These are Lawler's version of a Gretsch Filtertron pickup, and I specifically chose the vintage voice because I wanted sort of that old school Chet Atkins classic Gretsch sound. Now, when I was doing research, I ended up settling on the Lawlers for a few reasons. One, I've had good experiences with them in the past. A couple of parts casters that I've built before have had Lawlers in them. So I reached out to them and they were gracious enough to sponsor this video by providing the pickups for free. So if you want more information on these pickups that I'm using, they will be linked in the description box down below. Now I've already taken a few preliminary steps. I went ahead and measured the stock pickup height that these are sitting at so that I can match that when the new pickups go in. And I've also looked up and printed out a wiring diagram for this guitar so that I can have something to reference if I don't know which cable should go where. Now, one thing that you will need if you are gonna be doing this on a hollow body guitar is some fishing line. I learned this from Ben Calhoun over at Righteous Guitars when he swapped my ES335 pickups. What we're gonna have to do is literally undo each one of these potentiometers and pull them out through the body of the guitar so we can actually solder the new pickups in. 
and you're gonna need a way to get the pots back into their original position. Obviously, you can't stick your whole hand inside the guitar, so what I'm gonna do is actually tie on some fishing line to each pot before I remove it so that I can have something to pull the pot back through its original hole once I'm done soldering up the new pickups. So hopefully this works. I'm gonna quit procrastinating and just jump into this thing. truth it's going in just to test we can get it back yep good please don't come off Okay, so that actually was relatively painless. That was the part of the process I was the most worried about. But as you can see, I was able to get all of the guts out and this is actually a pretty simple wiring job. The pickups are basically wired directly to their respective volume pots and that seems to be it. So, should be a pretty simple process. I'm going to fire up the soldering iron and just go one pickup at a time. Unsolder the stock pickup, throw the lawler in, solder it up together, and then hopefully put all this stuff back to normal. We'll see. Okay, so I think I've got the pickups wired in correctly. The next step is to actually plug the guitar up and tap on each pickup, run through all the switching, make sure tone control works, the volume control works. Obviously, you wanna do this before you put the whole guitar back together so that if there is any problems, you can fix them and not have to redo the whole teardown process. Okay, so the neck pickup works. bridge doesn't seem to be working so okay I think I found the problem so if you look very closely you can see where the end of this ground shielding wire was touching this lug so I'm just going to trim and it's also touching there as well okay now let's try that there we go so that's it. Now I've just got to put it all back together and let's hear what these new pickups sound like.
Okay, so those pickups did exactly what I wanted them to. Now this thing actually sounds like a Gretsch and not just some hollow body Les Paul that has way too sharp and way too bright of a pickup. So they are a little lower output. You can hear that it's not hitting the front end of the Tweed amp quite as hard. And it's actually not hitting my overdrive pedals quite as hard either, but that's actually what I wanted. These pickups, as I understand it, are based on like a 63 country gentleman that Lawler got their hands on. And to my ear, this sounds like what Chet would have played, which is really what I wanted with this guitar. They're nice and balanced. They have enough high end to cut through a mix and actually sound like a Filtertron should. And the top end is also a little sweeter than the stock Filtertrons were. But yeah, I'm really happy. This guitar is gonna get worked into the rotation now more and more. I'm genuinely excited about picking this thing up and starting to play it on a daily basis. So there you go, that's Pickup Swapping 101. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of today's video and what do you think of these new pickups? Huge thanks to Lawler Pickups for supplying these Lawler Trons to go in my Black Falcon. Again, if you want more information on these, they will be linked down below where you can find really detailed sound examples and the direct specifications of these pickups that I put in my guitar. If you'd like to support the channel directly, consider buying a t-shirt or a coffee mug linked below or join the green room. There's multiple levels in the green room where you can do things like download my original music each month or have one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions with me. And I'm also in the middle of launching a private green room forum over there where there will be monthly song challenges, recording challenges, and lesson of the week content. So if you're interested in that, check that out down below. Also, if you're interested in where I'm going to be playing live, you can check that out on my website, retshawl.com. I've got a bunch of shows coming up, and I'm coming to London for the first time with Noah Guthrie in Good Trouble at the end of July 2019. So if you're in or around London and you want to come see us play, all that information will be on my website. Anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Rhett Shull. Thanks for watching, and remember, there is no plan B.